Hello everyone, welcome back to another project video. It makes me really happy that you're back here, ready to create. This week's project is really fun and colorful. We will learn about some contrasting color families, a popular art style, and a popular artist. And when I say popular, I really mean it. There is literally an art style called pop art. It comes from the word popular. This style is made from commercial items and cultural icons such as product labels, advertisements, and movie stars. In a way, pop art was a reaction to the seriousness of abstract expressionist art. Pop art is meant to be fun. And one of the most famous artists that contribute to pop art is Andy Warhol. He was an American artist, film director, and producer. He was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1928. And as you can see, he had a very particular style. Andy Warhol liked using very bright colors, and he was famous for exploring popular culture in his work. Popular culture is anything from Coca-Cola to pop stars to the clothes we people like to wear. He made a print of Campbell's Soup, a popular brand of soup in the United States. He said that he ate Campbell's tomato soup every day for lunch for 20 years. He liked to use repetition on his artwork. He was famous for coming up with art techniques that were easy to reproduce and mass produce. So now that we know all of this, then let's gather up our materials. You're going to need a white paper, pencil and eraser, some color pencils, and markers. Are you ready? Then let's make! Let's fold our paper in fourths. First the hamburger style, unfold, and then the hot dog way. When you open them up, you will see that you created four squares. Hmm, seems familiar? Let's trace the lines we created when we folded the vertical and the horizontal line. Trace it up with the black marker. Then we will use the same idea Andy used for his work, food. And you know what's very pop right now? Donuts. I mean, who doesn't like donuts, right? To begin our drawing of a donut, let's start by making a big oval. This oval has to occupy the whole square. To make sure I even it out, I'm using my finger to measure. I'm only leaving a finger size space from all four sides. Then we have to make the donut hole, which in drawing terms, it's just another oval, just smaller. I also use my fingers to even out the space and make sure both of my donut and donut hole are centered. Next, trace both lines with the black marker. To add dimension to our donut, add a curved down line inside of the hole. Then draw curvy lines along the donut to add the frosting. Finally, long slim ovals that will be our sprinkles. Now, this little trick that I'm showing you, it seems like a lot of work but it will actually make your life a lot easier. Grab a small piece of paper and put it on top of your donut drawing. The black marker is going to make the lines visible through the paper, so trace them. Make sure to align the edges of your second paper with the edges of your project paper to make it easy to place on the other three squares. When you are done, make sure to also trace the lines with the black marker to make it visible as well. Place that drawing under your project paper on each of the squares and voila! You have now four identical donuts. So now let's go ahead and trace them. Once you're done tracing, it's color time. Pop art was very famous for being bright and contrasting to the eye. To make sure we have a lot of contrast, we're going to use Complementary colors. Complementary colors are placed in opposite sides of the color wheel. This is why they have the highest contrast. 
They're opposite from each other, like up or down, black or white. So choose two warm colors and pair them with the cool complementary colors. Pause the video to make sure you get the right ones. I'm going to start coloring the background first, since it will be the easiest. I like to do the easiest first, but you do you. I'm strategically making sure that the warm colors are not side to side. So by placing, placing them diagonally, they automatically are not going to be side to side and neither will be the, co the cool colors. Once again, this is just to ensure the higher contrast. It's time to color the donut. We have to remember that most of the bread of the donut is a beige color or a tan color. Hi, let me interrupt for a little bit. Before we call these skin colors, let's remember that there are many other color skins around the world. Not everybody's skin color is peach or tan. So before we call this skin color, let's remember about all of the other skin colors there are. So we can call them their regular names like peach, tan, beige, etc. Little gestures like this are kind because it makes sure everyone else feels included. Now let's go back to our project. Okay, let's continue. Like I said, most part of the donut will be beige, tan, or light brown. I highly suggest to get a light tan color and then a darker brown to add shadow to our donut and make it look more real. To achieve this, first make sure that all of the bread parts of the donut are colored with your light tan color. Then switch to a darker color and softly start coloring around the edges, making the motion of little circles to ensure blending. Pause the video to know where to add shadows, but basically it's like tracing around everywhere in the edge, which should be making darker and then blending the dark color part with the light part by coloring softly in little circular movements. If you pause the video, you can see the difference between both donuts when it has shadow and when it doesn't. It really adds life to the drawing, so I really encourage you to try it. It's now the turn of the frosting and sprinkles. Let's also color in the opposite color, which is the complementary color, of its background to make sure we have enough contrast. Color in your sprinkles however you want, and we are done. No, just kidding, we are done. We have now created a beautiful piece of artwork while learning about complementary colors, pop art, and Andy Warhol. Such a bright and yummy project. I might need to get a donut after this. <laughs> Once again, I thank you for allowing me in your time and your space, and I thank you for creating with me. I'll see you next week with a new project video. Bye.